Um, could you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am um, a television executive. I'm currently the executive vice president of Afro Global Television and Silver Trust Media, which my husband and I, you know, own. I'm also associate publisher of Envision, Excellence and Destiny magazine. Um, as well, I also do public speaking. So I um, speak to entrepreneurs, women, and, and young people. And I also actually I'm a mother of four as well. <laughs> so wow. in a nutshell, that's that's me. So we run a 24-hour TV channel in the black community called Afro Global Television. Mm-hmm. Um, it's currently on Rogers Cable, Bell Five, Telos and East Link across Canada. And we published you know, over 20 titles in our Discover magazine series, including you know publications for countries. Um, and organizations. So our main areas of focus is uh, television, broadcasting. Uh, we also do events. We have two regularly scheduled award shows. And um, yeah, so that's in a nutshell who I am. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of stuff going on. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, what um, what made you decide to pursue your business? So prior to coming to Canada, I used to host a daily talk show in, in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, so when I came to Canada, I met my husband, Moses, and at the time, he actually ran a production studio in Ottawa. And so when we kind of, you know, became friends, uh, we wanted to have a TV show, um, you know, in Canada so I can continue to do what I used to do here. And he also um, intended to have a show on, on TV. So we decided to start pitching a few stations and we co- kind of kept hearing no and no and no. So um we then you know started this show planet africa which we um had on omni television it's still on omni tv actually you know till today um and um eventually we thought you know why don't we do what we're doing on a bigger scale so we started to you know uh plan to launch a 24-hour tv channel and in 2016 we were able to do that um, and so we kind of got into business, um, you know, my husband was in business before me, but I decided to become a full-time entrepreneur in 2002. So what happened was that I had just, you know, finished my wedding um, and um, I had a lot of family members from the UK, from Nigeria, from the US in town. So I was seeing my dad to the airport and I called in to tell my boss that I was going to be late. And she said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. So only for me to, you know, arrive. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come in. And I'm like, you know, what, what, what's wrong? And she said, um, I'm sorry, you know, you're fired. So I'm like, but I told you I was going to the airport to drop my father. You were at my wedding. You know, I just had a wedding just the last weekend. And she said, doesn't matter, you're fired. So um, I left that place, you know, sat on the staircase, you know, on my way down. I just sat there and contemplated for a very long time before I called my husband to come and pick me up. And that was the day I told myself that, you know what, um, I'm going to be an entrepreneur from now on because I gave this job my everything. I gave it my all. I was very, you know, astute in doing my work. And I thought if they could just let me go this way, it, it didn't make sense. So I said to my husband when he came to pick me, I'm going to join you in the business full time. And since then, since 2002, um, I've been a full time entrepreneur. We've launched so many initiatives um, since. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> Fantastic. My goodness. What a story. That's, uh, oh, um, can you tell us what, what have the barriers been uh, for you in your entrepreneurship? As an entrepreneur, you know, um, there are a lot of barriers uh, that, mm-hmm. you know, we face. And I, I think being an entrepreneur, you have to have a lot of guts, a lot of faith. And uh, you you have to also be strong and courageous because it can be sometimes scary, you know, because um, you don't know what you're going to make every month uh, for the most part. So you're kind of like just hoping that things will, you know, be okay. But I, I say that initially when we started, our biggest challenge was financing. Um, like when we launched a TV channel, we needed like millions of dollars to kind of get it started. Um, we had to raise funds and we, we also had to work with little um, in uh, at certain points of our business. So I say, you know, raising capital, you know, was not easy. And also the other thing is um, we have survived a recession. So in 2008, when there was a recession, our business was, you know, hit in a very big way. 
Um, and we kind of found ways and creative ways to not only stay afloat, but I'd say that we actually grew in the middle of a recession. Um, in 2008, we, when the recession hit, at some point it looked like nothing was happening and we're going to actually close down uh, our company. But we decided to sit down and remap things and you know come up with innovative ideas and we hired more people during that recession um mm-hmm. so i said financing was a, is the first thing the second thing is we serve a, a very you know small niche um we we have a magazine that is actually for all canadians called envision mm-hmm. uh, but most of our media properties serve the black community so when you actually serve a niche that's uh, historically disadvantaged and economically not as viable as other communities, uh, it could be challenging. Um, but overall, I think, you know, the purpose for which we're doing what we're doing is what has really kept us going. Uh, and I think um, as an entrepreneur, you also realize that sometimes finding the right people to fit the right roles can also be a challenge. Um, yeah, but overall, I say that there has not been any challenge that we have not really been able to overcome so far. <laughs> Wonderful. So is there a message you'd like to share with um, other women entrepreneurs? Yes, um, mm-hmm. I I have, you know, a few ideas and a few tips or advice I'd like to give to other female entrepreneurs. You know, as a female entrepreneur, we actually have, you know, a, an added layer of barrier for us. We have, you know, so many barriers that we have to overcome. Uh, First, you know, we live in a patriarchal society where, you know, sometimes people think that, you know, our male counterparts can deliver better when it comes to business or, you know, uh, doing certain uh, kinds of jobs. But women have a unique place in the marketplace, you know, in, in, in entrepreneurship because we bring things that are unique to the table. Number one, we're compassionate. Um, we're very good at negotiating. People don't know this. I know a lot of people think that men negotiate better than women, but I believe that women have a way of negotiating that's not necessarily um, overpowering or uh, intimidating, but we're very good at getting into people's hearts. Uh, and um, a salesperson, and I do know that one of the ways to get people to buy whatever you're selling it's not just to get into their heads, but into their hearts. And that's why sometimes people buy from people that they like. So women have that unique quality. And we're also very, we pay attention to detail. So um, use all these qualities. I know sometimes somebody said, um, when I go into the marketplace, I think like men think because it is dominated by men. But I say no to that. I want us to bring our unique qualities, our unique properties to the table because the world actually needs that. I mean, I feel like today the world needs more compassion. It needs, you know, people that do business with a heart and that's what women actually bring to the table. Uh, But I just shared a statistic that I saw the other day. It says that, um, you know, in Canada, for instance, uh, uh, 37% of self-employed people are women. But then, you know, 58% of, you know, men uh, are paid better than women in, in that space. So it means that we are not actually getting what we deserve. So I want to say to women out there, come into the marketplace boldly. Do not be afraid. You know, a study, recent, a recent study showed that only 32% of women who start businesses are actually thinking of getting a loan or financing outside their family members and friends. And we all know that, you know, to start a meaningful business uh, that will grow into a business that will make a significant impact, you, you have to actually get your financing in place. So I say to women, dream big. Don't just think of starting a small business because uh, in Canada, for instance, um, a lot of the small businesses are owned by women. In mm-hmm. fact, if you look at the statistics that came out in 2019, it showed out Canada was number one, like above the U.S. and the U.K., in innovation-based economies for new startups for women. But then we were number six when it came to women that own big businesses. Mm-hmm. So it means that we have a huge gap uh, for us to actually be able to run our businesses in a way that will make a bigger impact. So I said to women, dream big, go get the financing, make, make sure you have a very good business plan, get the financing and do the business in a way that will make a bigger impact. And also that will be financially rewarding for you and your family. Don't just think small. Think of starting a business that will stand the test of time and be here to not only uh, reach out to people that are here now, but the future generation as well. So can I ask you, in a fairy tale, 
uh, world, what do you feel like the next five years should look like for women and non-binary entrepreneurs or business owners? You know, I believe that, um, you know, the world is becoming more embracing of women in leadership roles in, you know, the marketplace and women in business and women in different spheres of life that we uh, in the past, we're not used to seeing, but I think the more work needs to be done. Women needs to be given an opportunity to thrive, and um, a more conducive atmosphere needs to be created for women. Because sometimes I find that there's some systemic barriers um, that make it difficult for women to make it. I mean, we're lucky in Canada because in some parts of the world, women still can't own land. Uh, women cannot even register a business. But well, we're lucky here that we can do all those things. Um, but I, I, I think that in the next five years, um, women are going to you know, be doing big things in the marketplace. But women still face a lot of challenges, be it mentorship, financing, um, or um, societal norms that, or systems that are put in place, that are already in place, that make it difficult for women to kind of um, thrive in you know, business. So I think... Um, we will see more women doing bigger things. But I also believe that, you know, we as women, uh, we have also uh, decided that we're going to be advocating for ourselves a lot. And we're influencing policies now, making sure that things are put in place uh, for us to be able to do more. Because it's been said that if you do not raise your hands, you will not be counted. So we women, in the next five years, I think we're going to continue to raise our hands more so that we actually not only acknowledge but given an opportunity to make our mark in different spheres of life, including as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, if I could ask you, what, how would you like to see your business grow? Um, so our business, so we do a lot of things. Uh, we mm -hmm. are a production studio. So we produce not just for our TV channel, but we produce for other people. So we, we do corporate videos. Uh, promotional videos for uh, you know other organizations and entities we're also a graphic design company because we have magazines right so we have a, a graphic yes. design arm of our company as well where we offer um you know graphic design services be producing publications annual reports even web design and, and things like that um, and we also do events so we we do event solutions and marketing so we started to do ma social media digital marketing um, a few years ago um, when we realized that that was a big need because a lot of companies want to market themselves digitally, but they don't have the know-how. So uh, because we have all these platforms and we have a whole team that do all these things, we started to offer that service. So what we want to do more in the next few years is to um, offer more you know, digital marketing services to companies. And we also want to now um, have our channel digitally as well so that people can just, you know, watch us not just on conventional television, um, you know, on cable and satellite, but to be able to see us um, in, you know, apps like Amazon Prime or even on their phones and stuff like that. So that's where we're actually going. We're trying to digitize all our operations to make sure that, um, you know, more people can see us. I want to integrate all our operations in a way that will actually not just make us um, to be seen here in Canada, but globally. Uh, as well. And I'm excited about the new phase, the next phase, because the next phase of things um, for us is globalization to make sure that everyone is included in what we're doing and uh, we're able to impact and um, inspire people, not just here, but all over the world as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Can I ask you, because you, you accomplished so many things, what uh, is one thing in particular or one thing that you're very very proud of um one thing that i'm very proud of is mm -hmm. uh, launching a 24-hour tv channel mm -hmm. you know when we started um our tv show in 2002 it was just one 30 minute show on omni and we had a website and on that website we did say that our goal one of our dreams was to launch a 24-hour tv channel so in 2016, when it happened, you know, it looked like an impossible goal. Um, at the time, we kind of, you know, had this vision. But when it happened, I was like, wow, you know, dreams do come true. And it is possible to actually do big things. And it's the biggest thing we've ever done. Um, it, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not an easy business, you know, to go into, to have something that's 247, you know, people working around the clock, you know, having this programming, producing 
Um, and, you know, it's like feeding a giant. You kind of like just have to keep going and producing. But mm-hmm. I, I think that was one of the biggest things that we did that has really made me know that if you can actually visualize it, if you can dream it, it can actually happen if you put the right steps in place to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. And what kept you feeling particularly driven and motivated during those harder times or harder parts of your entrepreneurship in building? Yeah, I would say that um, before you go into anything, it's always great to settle, you know, the why, you know, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Um, What does this mean? Who is going to benefit from this? Who is it going to impact? How is this going to change society? How is this going to make my life better? Um, Who is going to be the the end user or, or the client and how is this going to make their lives better I, I think for us when we started we just noticed that there were no positive images of uh, you know black people on television mm-hmm. um, in the media and we kind of wanted to change that we wanted to make sure that our young people you know saw role models when they watch television I also wanted to inspire our community to aspire for greater level of levels of success and so there was nobody doing what we're doing and we just thought you know we could you know do this and um and i think whenever things were tough we went back to that we asked us so why are we doing this uh what is this going to do and is, is there a way we can you know do things better um for instance when the re- recession hit i know i said we we kind of hired more people and grew during the recession yeah. um how did we do that we just decided to sit down and ask ourselves questions um how what what can we do that we haven't done? So at that time we were not producing magazines for other people. We we're just doing magazines, our own magazines. But during this recession, we said, okay, um, what are the skills that we have that we can offer to other people? And so we now said, okay, we you know we're a production company. So that means we can produce videos for other people. So we now started to do that for other people um, and to reach out and say, you know what, we do we can do this for your company. We can produce a promo video for you. And then we we now went to Ottawa. Well, you know, my husband and I, we had two kids then. We took the kids to Ottawa and mm-hmm. every day we went from one embassy to the next, pitching them the idea of doing magazines for their countries. And guess what? By the time we finished, we had actually booked Discover to, to produce a Discover Zimbabwe, Discover Zambia. And we eventually did a Discover Nigeria, which we actually had to meet the president of Nigeria to do. So during that recession, we came up with this idea that we never thought of because things were so tough. No one was advertising, right? Mm -hmm. So when things are down for you as an entrepreneur, ask yourself, what else can I do that I haven't done? Be creative. Just think outside the box. Be innovative. And then ask yourself, why did I start this? And if your why is strong enough, you will not give up. And let giving up not be an option. I know people say, okay, you know, always have a plan B. I think the reason we're still in business today is because we don't have a plan B. <laughs> so if you don't have a plan B, you got to make plan A work. So I say to, um, you know, female entrepreneurs out there, let your business be your plan A and your plan A. So no, uh, for mm-hmm. us, there's no plan B. If there was a plan B, would have left plan A a long time ago. But when you have that plan A and that's, you know, what you believe in and know, um, is going to make the impact that you want to make in the world, you find ways to make it work. And I'm telling you, whenever you feel like quitting, there are at least 10 things you can do to make it work. Always remember that. And until you've explored those 10 things, don't give up. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, can I ask you what made you sign up with the Canadian Women Chamber of Commerce? You know, as, um, as an entrepreneur, um, it's always great to network with other entrepreneurs and understand what they're going through. Um, mm-hmm. For instance, there was a time that I went to this, you know, event and um, they they had breakout sessions where we kind of were in little groups and we're chatting. It was an event for entrepreneurs. And I remember we were having, a, you know, this, you know, issue then in our company. And I, I just had another woman um, at this event talking about the same thing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only one going through this. Somebody else is actually experiencing exactly the same thing. And we got talking and, you know, we shared ideas on how we're actually navigating this particular issue that we're having. And I thought, oh my God, just knowing that somebody else was going through what I was going through just gave me so much a relief and then to then hear how they were navigating and you know able to pull through I just thought 
you know what? I wish to talk to someone. And that's the thing. So networking is so important. That's why I joined the organization because I thought I could, you know, um, meet people of like mind. And even reading the, the newsletters and reading about other women entrepreneurs out there is inspiring. Um, and and I, I know that, you know, we are always stronger together. And I thought instead of working this road alone, it's great to become uh, part of an organization that's actually established to make sure that women thrive. And I mean, the chamber has just been, you know, a, a great support for not just myself, but other women. And, and, and I encourage every woman out there who's not part of this um, to join and, and, and see other women be inspired and network and have an opportunity to kind of um, hear ideas on how you can make your business better. Mm -hmm. All very, very uh, beneficial for sure. Um, So uh, what exactly is your expertise? Let's, let's talk about that again. (laughs) And and how can people reach you? How can people reach out to you? Okay. Place to reach you. So, um, I'm a, I'm a TV producer, so mm-hmm. we can produce. Uh, let me just break it down because when I start to speak in the you know, uh, professional terms, it might be a bit tricky. So what we can do for people is if you're looking for a promo video to put yourself out there in a way that people will notice and your clientele will kind of take advantage of your services, we can help you do that. If you're looking for a way to market your company digitally, so you're too busy doing your business and once more you take care of the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and all that. Um, we do that also. So we, we help with digital marketing. And if you like to put like together flyers or a website um, that, you know, will make you stand out um, or even, you know, to put together a branding package, a media kit that you can send to, you know, potential clients or even to the media or potential investors or financiers, we can help you do that. So um, I say, you know, anything publishing, uh, production, and, and if you have an event, you're looking for a company that will help you to make the event top notch, we're experts in that. So those three areas, production, um, marketing, graphic design, and then if, if you need help with events as well. So it, it's a lot, but we do all the mm-hmm. things. <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent so how can people reach i like you? how people find me yes yes well, our, our website is silvertrustmedia.com okay. and if you're trying to reach the tv channel is afroglobaltelevision.com um, and you can also reach me on instagram facebook twitter uh, my handles are at patricia babia mawa wonderful thank you so much patricia it's been like wonderful speaking with you and um hearing about all you've accomplished thank you for being on our spotlight yeah thanks for having me Mm -hmm.